Hey everyone, this is Jeff. Welcome back to another tutorial video. This is episode two of our XBMC automated content series. And in this video, we're going to install SAB NZBD Plus, which I'm not ever going to say again. We're going to call it SAB from now on. Uh, and if we can get there, we'll also try and configure SAB. We may not have enough time, so we might have to configure it in the next video. Anyway, let's get started. SAB is a binary newsgroup downloader, uh, and it's basically the backbone of our automated content system. It handles all of the dirty work of downloading whatever content it is that you're looking for. It runs in the background and can be accessed via a web interface, primarily for configuration, maybe to check the logs. The majority of the time, however, the other programs in the series communicate with SAB via an application programming interface or an API. SAB does it all. It downloads, it verifies, it repairs, and it extracts if necessary. All of the complexity of downloading from Usenet manually has been automated. Effectively, you just get usable files when it's finished. The other programs in the series, Sick Beard, Couch Potato, and Headphones, basically find content and then pass it off to SAB for downloading. At the end of that download sequence when SAB is finished, the programs then pick those files up and post-process them. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the individual programs in their videos. If you've been following along, you may at some point have asked yourself, does this cost anything? Uh, XBMC, SAB, Sickbeard, Couch Potato, and Headphones are all open source and free software. But access to downloading all the content from Usenet is not. Now, there's a bunch of different Usenet providers out there. If you Google search, you'll see lots and lots of entries. When you're looking for a provider, the things I recommend you want to look for, <clears throat> unlimited downloads, SSL support, and a large retention period. There are uh, less expensive plans from providers that have a cap on the download size per month. And if you're not really trying to download a lot of content, that might work for you and it could be cheaper. So that's okay. But if you're trying to use this as your main source of you know TV shows and movies, etc., you probably want unlimited. SSL support is nice. If you want to, you can encrypt the traffic between you and the Usenet server. Basically, nobody will know what it is you're downloading. And the retention period just helps if you're looking for older stuff. The larger the retention period, the longer that uh, Usenet provider keeps content uh, in storage, basically. <clears throat> A thousand day retention period would give you the option of looking back uh, almost four years for content. You'll typically see a charge of around $15 or less per month, and most providers offer a yearly rate, or if you pay the entire year up front, it'll be cheaper, and somewhere in, um, under $100 uh, for the year U.S. To get the best results, you're also going to want a Usenet index provider. These are actually really, really cheap. Don't, don't really, really worry about how much that's going to cost. You can think of the index provider like a Google search. So the Usenet provider stores the actual files and the content. The, the indexer actually lets you search, find what you want, and then pass that off to SAB, and SAB will go to your Usenet provider to download it. You can get by without the index provider, uh, but you won't find anywhere near as much content as you would if you used a provider. And here's an example of what the cost structure looks like. Bear in mind, this is just an example. There's lots of providers out there. You could pay more or less money. Different countries are certainly going to pay differently than, than the U.S. So this is just a ballpark to give you some idea. We're also not trying to recommend or endorse a specific provider here. Well, we just picked two to use as examples. So for the Usenet host, we selected Usenet server. The monthly cost is $10 U.S. and the yearly cost is $95.40, which equates to about $7.95 a month US. And then NZB Matrix as the index provider, uh, and they charge seven pounds, which depending on the exchange rate is around $10 US. And that gives you a 10 year subscription. So as I said before, the, the index provider is not really worth you know complaining about from a price perspective. If you're using this system for your primary source of watching TV shows uh, and movies, $95 for a year is pretty inexpensive compared to what people pay monthly for television service. Okay, 
Let's go ahead and install SAB. We'll see where we are time-wise and maybe we can do some configuration. <clears throat> I've downloaded the, the Windows setup for SAB. We're just going to step through that and once it's finished we'll actually run the wizard and do the basic configuration. Uh, I want SAB to run at startup and I don't really need the association for NZB files. Kind of let it go into its you know, default directory. Uh, I don't need the release notes and we're just going to say start hidden. However, the very first time uh, that you run SAB, it will pop up the web browser to configure it. And again, I don't think we can configure the whole thing in this video, but we'll go through the very basics. I'm going to put in some junk information now. I don't want to put in any private data. Uh, and then we'll, we'll tweak it in the next video. So for wizard here, we're going to just pick English. <clears throat> it wants, you know, a Usenet host. So we're just going to put in uh, Usenet host. And we'll use 563 as our port. The name is um, name, password is pass, whatever. Again, this is all for now. This is nonsense because I'm going to fill this out with real data off camera. I, I want SAB to be viewable by any PC on the network. You can password protect that if you want. To keep things simple during the tutorial, I'm not going to, but you probably want to do that for your own uh, system. And right now I'm going to allow the internet browser to launch every time SAB starts, but normally you'll turn that off after you're done configuring it. Uh, I'm not going to put in the news matrix information or anything now. Uh, it's going to go ahead and restart, and it will come up with its normal interface. You won't see the wizard generally again unless you uninstall it. And we'll look at the configuration, but uh, again, I don't think we have time in this video to do it all, so we'll wait for the next video. But Here's your default interface. Right now there's no content in here. Nothing has ever been downloaded. There's no queue, so you don't see anything really of value. Config is where we go and make changes to settings. And we have all these tabs here with all these different settings. Well, it turns out I had the time all wrong, and there's actually some time for us to do some configuration in this video. So ignore a few things that I just said, and let's, uh, let's go forward. Well, the, I'm just going to go through all the settings in the tabs here. The ones that need explanation, I'm going to explain. The ones that you know, either we're not going to touch or are, don't really need any explanation, I'm going to skip over. This is your local host. When you set it to zero, basically, SAB will listen on the default interface on the machine. You don't really have to worry about it. If you don't want it running on port 8080, you can change it. This is where you would change it. If you're going to add a username and password required to log into the web interface, here's where you would put those. You can select different interfaces to the web, it's the, to the skin that it uses, if you will, uh, and those are your options here. This one is useful, the API key, and uh, we'll show you how to use that actually in Sickbeard, Couch Potato, and Headphones, because that's part of how they talk uh, to, Sick, uh, to SAB, but for right now, know that it's here under config general because you're going to come back to it. Uh, I'm not going to turn on HTTPS support right now. If you wanted to restrict how much bandwidth SAB uses on your network, you would enter that data here. You can also dynamically enter it when you're looking at the normal interface for SAB, the, the queue. But if you want it to stay, and every time SAB starts or the machine reboots or anything of that nature, you're going to want to put it here. You can also create a cache. If you have memory on your machine to spare, you can use memory to cache articles. It just makes things a little bit faster, a little bit less wear and tear on your hard drive. Uh, it's, it's recommended to do so, but if you don't have the memory to spare, you probably shouldn't. So that's your choice. And then the cleanup list, you know, if, if you're using post-processing the way we're going to set it up, you probably want to get rid of uh, info files and, uh, and other things that might be part of the download by default. And so you could put those files here in this cleanup list. I'm not specifically going to put anything in right now, but if you're, as you go along in time, if you're noticing that you're getting some, you know, junk in your directories that you don't really want or need, here's where you might be able to clean it up by adding those extensions to this page. All right, so if you made any changes here, go ahead and hit Save Changes. We didn't really change anything, so I don't need to do that. Folders. If you'll recall, we created a little structure earlier 
where we you know created TV shows, music, movies, and then a downloads folder in library, right? Under downloads, we've had complete, incoming, whoops, went into incoming, and scripts. We're going to use those right now in SAB. So this path is actually C, library, downloads, and then complete, incoming, and scripts. If I click up here, you'll see that, right? Okay. So the temporary download folder, this is our incoming folder. By default, it's set to downloads complete. We're actually going to put in <coughs> C, library, downloads, incoming and then C library downloads in this case complete and again we're using these two directories and the path for them is C library downloads now you don't have to do this exactly the way I'm showing you I'm just trying to make you understand where things go you can put this on a file server somewhere on your network. You can put it on another computer. You can put it on a different drive. You just need to give it the correct path in order for it to find things, right? And then the scripts directory is special. We're going to set it up right now in SAB, but we're not going to use it until we get to Sixbeard's configuration. I just want you to know about it now. So, uh, C library download scripts, and that's actually our post-processing scripts folder. So, C library downloads scripts okay the administrative folder will leave default as admin the log folder as logs and uh, I'm not actually backing up NZBs um, because once you have them you generally don't want to download them again uh, but you know that's your choice click save changes and then we'll go look at switches all right, check for a new release. That's a good idea. This is where you would turn off the browser on startup launch option. Once you finish configuring and you're, you don't need it to run on your machine every time, just uncheck that and off it goes. Disconnect on MTQ, always a good idea. You don't really need to sit there and hold open a connection to your Usenet server if you don't have a queue of things to go download. Uh, detect duplicate downloads. I like to say discard. I don't want duplicates. Ignore samples. In my particular case, I don't want to download like the video samples that come with say a movie. Sometimes people upload a small sample so you can get an idea of the quality. I, I don't want to download those. So I, I say do not download. And <clears throat> I'm going to leave the enable, en enable folder rename and replace illegal characters uh, as they are default checked. Hit save changes and um, servers. This is where you would, you could have multiple servers here. And again, I've left my default data in here for the time being. When we go to do testing, I'll put it in here. Um, scheduling, if you want, you can put, turn on a schedule of when SAB act, you know, functions and when it doesn't. I particularly like to leave it running all the time, but that's me. I think we need to stop now. I think that's probably as far as we can go in this video. So we'll pick it up in video three. See you next time.